What is up, folks? It is Sunday, June 30th here in Louisville, Kentucky, and it is time for week 26 of the BladeForums.com Year of Giveaways. Uh, it is live stream time, as usual. We've done this 26 times before, so if this is your first time tuning in, I'll break down how it works. Otherwise, welcome back to the people who have been uh, loyal and faithful to the cult of BladeForums.com since the beginning. We are at the halfway point after today's live Live stream and with uh, this week's giveaway we are halfway through the uh, bladeforms.com year of giveaways because 52 divided by 2 equals 26 and uh, hmm, weird nope I'm uh, not going to answer this right now my uh, stepson apparently is trying to uh, uh, FaceTime me from uh, from deployment so yeah i am not gonna uh answer that right now i'll get back with him later so yeah folks what's going on day dreamer uh what's going on with you man good to see if i can figure out how this mirror works you can see up in the chat window there we've got daydreamers here mark grant's here chris doyle here uh jason puckett is here welcome to everybody that uh, is watching we've currently got uh oh wow yeah not uh not a huge amount of people uh, tuned in, but we will have more as the broadcast goes on because, as usual, we have some great prizes to give away for the uh, live stream, and we've got various other stuff going on as well. So, uh, busy week this week. It's been uh, it's been interesting. Um, a lot of stuff going on in the world. A lot of stuff going on. Uh, not really a huge amount of stuff going on on the forums. Uh, just various stuff uh, happening. Um, NRA drama is still taking place with uh, Chris Cox resigning from his post at the NRA. Um, any of you guys watching the Democratic debates? Uh, they've got 20 uh, people running for or trying to win the uh, primary for uh, president for the uh, for the Democratic candidate uh, going up against Donald Trump. And wow, it has been a fucking train wreck. Um, let's see. Oh, something in the chat. Um, you posted the winners of last time, not week 24. Mark, uh, you're saying I'd never posted the, uh, week 24 winners? I mean, I did the, uh, week 23 and week 24. Um, I think we did the combined... Uh, drawing that week where uh, yeah because YouTube was having an outage on week 23 we did week 23 and week 24 um, we did the c combination on the live stream and then yeah week 25 um, yeah week 25 was the uh, bug out week 20 you know now I gotta look at the uh, giveaway threads here and see what's going on here so let's uh, let's take a look on the uh, giveaway forum and see what's going on here. All right, so week week 26 was the Boker, uh, week 26 uh, Boker Urban Trapper, so yeah. Week 25, oh shit, yeah, looks like, um, yeah, looks like I misnumbered these. So week, yeah, week 25 was the bug out. Okay, week 24 was the bug out. Week 25 was the uh, Manix 2. And this week is week 26 with the uh, Boker Urban Trapper Coca-Bolo. And then next week is uh, uh, week 27 with the uh, Kaiser uh, V3466 um, A2 Dukes uh, Red and Black. So, yeah. Um, Mark, give me a second here. Um, I could have sworn I posted uh, all this stuff up on the uh, uh, giveaway threads, but yeah, I'll uh, I'll take a look at this stuff. Um, I'll take a look at this stuff after the uh, uh, giveaway or or after the live stream is done. I'll try to figure out how, in my incompetence, I have uh, screwed this up yet again. So uh, yeah, uh, Sunday, five o'clock, um, June thirtieth. For once, it's not raining, but it's probably getting rain too because I felt raindrops outside, uh, all of a uh, hundred plus uh, degrees here. Um, Mark Grant, I'm sorry to do this now. I can't get a hold of you. Um, 
I mean, dude, I'll, uh, you know, like I said, I'll get a hold of you after the broadcast and figure out what's going on. Um, I mark your, uh, is your mark, is your Blade Forums username uh, Marcus Bear? Because if so, then yeah, I've got, you know, I've got you on my list for the uh, uh, Week 24 live stream prize pack, and I'll uh, notify you um, once I send out the names on Week 20. You know, I, I haven't. I haven't notified anybody from week 24 or week 25, you know, I haven't gotten around to actually notifying these people that they have won the prizes or shipped any of that out or anything like that. So yeah, it's not just you, it's other people as well. So once, uh, you know, once I'm done with the broadcast, I'm going to take care of housekeeping and contact all the people um, that have won prizes from uh, previous stuff. So yeah, no worries, man. Uh, thank you for... You know, I appreciate you uh, keeping me in check, and uh, I will notify you as soon as we're done. In the meantime, go drink some of my red drink and get back to what we were talking about. So, um, Democratic primary uh, debates are going on, and it's a fucking train wreck. You've got 20 uh, challengers um, all trying to see who's going to lose uh, the uh, Democratic uh, um, election. Uh, you know, basically the biggest losers uh, for the Democratic primaries are the American people. Um, you know, I don't know if any of y'all watch the Democratic debates, but yeah, like I said, a train wreck is probably putting it mildly. Every single candidate got up and said, yeah, we're going to give health free health care and education to illegal aliens. Um, every single Democratic candidate said that they were for confiscating uh, firearms from the law-abiding public. Um, you know, so it's, uh, you know, it's a train wreck here, folks. And, you know, this is just a sign of how uh, far left the Democratic Party has uh, gone. Oh, Big Bad Goth is here. What's up, Big Bad Goth? Uh, live stream in Ireland. Uh, good to see Emerald Island uh, representing... Um, you know, where's uh, where's uh, Iron Kid? Where's your husband? Is he uh, forsaken us? Is he uh, not showing up anymore? My God, can't trust the Irish these days. It's just like uh, just like being back in the 1700s, I guess. Um, so yeah, there we go. So let's uh, let's take care of some housekeeping real quick because I have got the attention span of a goldfish, and if I don't know if I don't take care of this stuff now, I probably will forget about it uh, entirely. Um, welcome to the live stream of the BladeForums.com Year of Giveaways, Week Twenty Six. This week we will be giving away a Boker uh, Seven Thirty Four Boker Seven Thirty Four Urban Trapper. Uh, this has got a VG10 blade, it has a Cocobola scale, it has titanium handles. Very cool knife. Uh, for those of you who've been paying attention, we've already given away one of these. Boker sent us four Urban Trappers total, two with G10 and two with uh, uh, Cocobola wood. We've got one more G10 one that'll be coming up uh, later on down the road uh, for the giveaways. So yeah. Um, we This week we'll be giving away the uh, Boker. Next week, we will be giving away the Kaiser Duke Light, um, red and black G10. Very cool knife. Kaiser uh, was generous enough to give us a whole box of uh, knives for giveaways, so they really went above and beyond um, for the giveaway stuff here. Duke G10 is very cool. Locking liner, flipper, opens like a champ. VG10 blade, G10 handle, very cool. Has the kind of scallop design here. Uh, that makes it easy to grab hold of. And this is going to do well in anybody's pocket. Um, does have pocket clip. Pocket clip's not ambidextrous. So uh, if you're left handed, you're just going to have to deal. Uh, if you're left handed like I am, you're just going to have to deal and carry it in your uh, right pocket. Um, Dukes, Crystal Oil says the Dukes is hella slicey and thin on bearings. It is. It is a very, very, very thin uh, knife. Uh, not thick at all in cross section. It is on bearings. Opens extremely smoothly. Um, you know, if somebody like me, who's uh, giant fumble fingers, can get it open every time, then yeah, it's a uh, smooth knife. Because man, I am. Even though I am Mr. Knife uh, Dude, I am incompetent when it comes to this stuff, and I'm able to get it going. So yeah. Um, also, you know, for this week we have. Uh, uh, live stream uh, prize pack that will be given away. Um, should I go through that or should I leave? Let it be a mystery. Let me uh, see some. Uh, 
uh, K's in chat if you guys are interested in seeing what's in the live stream uh, prize pack this week or if you just want it to be a mystery. That's cool. Um, for next week, let's take a look here. Uh, make sure that you guys get in on the uh, on the next week um, giveaway entries for the uh, Kaiser V3466A2 Dukes Red and Black. Make sure you guys get your entries in on there and make sure that you uh, cast your vote for what next week's thing is. So far, or what week 28's giveaways should be, because we've got the Becker BK5, Ontario Hunt uh, Plus Camp Knife, Buck Bantam, Himalayan Imports 12-inch Angola Kukri, or the Mystery Knife to be determined by me. You know, so far, looking at the results, that has 22 votes as opposed to everything else. So you know, there's still plenty of time for you guys to skew um, what is going to be given away. Um, so, yeah, get your uh, get your entries in, get your votes in. And while you're at it, make sure that you like this video. Make sure that you subscribe to the BladeForums.com channel. And make sure that you comment and hit the notifications bell and all the rest of that happy stuff uh, for you know, our channel metrics or whatever uh, gets stuff, you know, do us a solid. You're watching already. Doesn't take you any time. Hit the like button or hit the like thing. Hit the uh, bell. Hit Leave a comment down below about how, you know, super awesome the Blade Forms channel is and how you're happy to be a member. And with that, um, let's talk about, okay, cool. Let's talk about what's going to be given away this week on the uh, live stream prize bag. So you guys are here, uh, your time is valuable, and I appreciate y'all uh, taking time from your weekend uh, to watch me ramble about stuff. So every week we do the live stream uh, giveaway for people in the chat, and this week it's no different. We are going to give away this week a Schrade Nitro. This is a uh, Schrade SQ312. This is a knife that we've I've had kicking around here. I think I've got a half dozen of them uh, laying around here in the shop. This is uh, from, you know, about uh, 10 years ago, I think. They're just, you know, collecting dust. So I'm going to give uh, one of you guys this away. Uh, Black Blade, no idea what the steel is. This is from when Schrade was still uh, U.S. owned uh, before it got, uh, before they went out of business and got bought out by uh, Taylor Cutlery. Uh, Black Blade, uh, rubber handles, deep carry pocket clip before they got cool, before they were cool. Uh, double thumb stud. So yeah, price, uh, Live stream prize pack giveaway is going to have that. Live stream prize pack is, as usual, going to have an SEAH1 Arrowhead. Um, got some stickers for you guys. Uh, Magpul sticker, Velocity System sticker, Protec Knives sticker. So that's going in there. We also have uh, some soy sauce that's going in there. Some random desk crap from my laser cutter uh, that's going in. Um, a Hank of 550 cord that may or may not have fallen into uh, the dog's watering bowl over there off camera. I uh, can't promise it has, but I cannot promise it also has not taken a bath in the uh, dog's watering bowl. And the best part of any of the Bladeforms.com livestream prize packs, the hobo knife. This is the little whirlwind. And you can tell, you know, this is a frost cutlery flying falcon little whirlwind you cannot buy quality like this unless you go to a gas station um you know custom designed by who we have no idea plastic handle that's correct this is a frost cutlery custom designed plastic handle knife made by the finest of uh chineseium workers forged in the fires of mount doom partially serrated edge made of the uh, uh, rarest of Chinese steels has a ball chain to make sure that you lose your knife when you most need it and this could be yours not 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 covered in hobo juice for some reason I don't know uh, I have no idea why some of these are covered in hobo juice and some of them aren't but this one here is going to be part of the uh, live stream prize pack and uh, part of the viewer, viewer prize choice. So yeah. In addition to that, as usual, we're going to be doing the uh, standard uh, Bladeforms.com giveaways for the week 26. We've got the Bladeforms.com sticker that looks exactly like the Bladeforms.com logo uh, that you can see down below and on the t-shirt behind me. We've got the Bladeforms.com Velcro patch, uh, v PVC Velcro patch that you can see. Again, looks just like the logo down in the uh, lower right hand corner 
We have got the BladeFarms.com logo t-shirt behind me uh, that's made of only the finest uh, of uh, uh, cotton and uh, materials. And uh, we have the Boker 734 that I've already talked about. Oh, somebody's going to be winning a uh, BladeForms.com membership extension. And you guys get to listen to me ramble. So let's, uh, let's break down the rules uh, once again before we get to it. Each week we do the giveaways uh, for the items. Uh, you can see in the giveaway thread I talk about, I show a picture of the knife, I show a picture of the specs, I show a picture of all the patches and stickers that are available. Um, if you are a... The criteria for meeting eligibility for the giveaways are that you must have registered before November 2nd, two th or 2018, which was like BladeForms.com 20th anniversary. If you... Um, did register for 2018 November 2nd, and you do not have a paid subscription. You need to send. You need to have sent a letter to 8007 Vinecrest Avenue, number six, Louisville, Kentucky 40222. That is to ensure that uh, you are a real life human being who did not register 20 or 30 uh, fake um, profiles to spam your chances on winning whatever knife is going on this week. Thus far. No letters have come in this week, so yeah, nobody uh, who has a uh, nobody who has a registered user membership is going to be eligible to win the grand prize. Um, if you have a paid membership, um, then your the registration date requirement is waived. So good to go. You could have registered today and been uh, eligible, or could have registered yesterday posted in the giveaway thread for week 26 and been eligible to win um, the Boker or any of the other knives uh, going forward. So that is the rules of the game here. Um, you know, if you send a letter with your username, your post number in the giveaway thread, why I would own to own a knife or to get a, one of our prizes, then you're eligible to win. Um, if you don't send that letter, then you're not eligible to win, which is kind of dumb because we've had multiple um, registered users uh, post in the threads and actually get picked for t-shirts or, or you know stickers or patches and they never sent their letter so they had to be skipped over. So it is what it is. And I am seeing weird stuff in the chat. Uh, you've been harvesting the hobo juice to make a pure form of hobo juice. Yes, hobo juice distillation is a rare and lost art. Um, the modern form of it is called thermal depolymerization, where you just toss the hobos into a reactor, uh, melt them down for the components, and then use that as a clean and renewable source of energy. Um, but yeah, you could have distilled the hobo juice in the past and use that as a, kind of a substitute for ethanol. Uh, let's see, how's the look, shop looking now? Um, well, the shop is looking okay uh, right now. It's not too bad. It's not uh, great. Still making improvements uh, every day. This week's project has been laser cutting price tag holders um, so that I can put price tags on the. Well, actually, I'll try to. I'll try to show you here. Um, basically, you know, me being a, th a uh, cheap bastard, I've got the laser cutter behind me, and instead of buying knife racks for the display cases, I've been cutting out um, knife racks out of acrylic I had on hand, bending them in a heat strip bender, and then uh, using that in the uh, display cases, which, you know, when you've got 14, 15 display cases and eight plus uh, racks on each level, you know, that winds up being hundreds of these little racks here. And since buying them from a third party vendor means that you're spending 25 to $35 a piece on these bastards, you know, quickly that money adds up. Whereas with my laser cutter and buying uh, plastic from a wholesaler, I'm able to get these cranked out with just, you know, m minimal amount of uh, investment. So what I've been doing is building these and doing price tag holders for this and breaking the price tag holders because I'm not uh, very good at doing the measurements. Um, here's an example. You can see the price tag holder here. I've been generating barcode labels and stuff like that and uh, trying to get my uh, shop looking a bit more professional for the display cases. So that's been what I've been doing um, this week. Yeah, like uh, Big Bad Golf said, it's arts and crafts with Spark. And I'll try to... Somebody today is going to be getting, um, well, actually here. All right, so 
I've got a uh, zebra label printer uh, on my desk for printing up the uh, labels and when the labels go onto the price tag holder you know it'll have price sale amount SKU, product name and a barcode then all of that will go on the rack to be displayed behind the knife like so so that way when people come in they're not asking me hey man how much for this knife what's the product you know that way i don't have people going man i've got 30 dollars to spend and i really like this knife right here and that knife happens to be 150 dollars and they're disappointed so yeah part of the merchandising uh, plans and stuff like that trying to get that stuff taken care of arts and crafts with spark um broken Broken tag holder should be part of the price. Should be uh, part of the prize pack. Yeah, I can, I can totally do that. Let me fish that out of the garbage here. Now that I've, now that I've thrown it away. All right. Okay. Broken price tag holder covered in Gatorade, straight into the uh, uh, prize pack box that somebody will be getting away shortly. So yeah, uh, good good suggestion. Good suggestion, Ed. Um, I am very much open to constructive uh, criticism, so yeah, I will, I'm going to, um, good suggestion, Ed, you, your uh, feedback has been implemented. So yeah, um, so. Do we have new people in the uh, chat today? Do we have new uh, folks in the chat? Turkey Sandwich, I love your channel. Cool. Hey there, Turkey Sandwich. Thanks for the support. Uh, what else is in the trash? Uh, well, today we have got um, just some minor stuff in the trash here. We have uh, a bottle of Kroger's uh, water flavoring. We have a uh, empty Gatorade bottle. We have a empty bottle or empty bag of organic uh, cashews. And we've got a Starbucks thing along with some used up Dixie cups and red solo cups and stuff like that uh, from stuff that I've eaten. So yeah, um, you know, grand prize live stream winner will also win the empty bottle of, um, of water flavoring. Truly, you guys have been blessed. So not only is there a package of soy sauce in there, but there's water flavoring, hobo knife, and uh, various other things. Desk crap is the best crap, right? So, yeah, Mark Grant, I want the cashews. They're not cashews. It's an empty bag of pistachios, dude. Uh, sorry, they've all been eaten. Uh, let's see. God, man, it's like 524. I don't even know what the fuck I'm doing today. So let's uh, let's uh, let's cover. Um, we've already covered the rules, right? Yeah, I've already covered the rules. So yeah, let's uh, n knock out a couple things first and foremost here uh, for people. We're gonna give away the sticker. We're gonna give away the uh, bladeforms.com Velcro or PVC patch, and uh, move on from there. And then I'm gonna cover some news. Then we'll come back and do the uh, live stream um, giveaway of the membership, the T-shirt and the grand prize and the live stream stuff and we'll uh, take care of all that right now because time is a wasting so for those of you who haven't tuned in before um here's how we do the giveaways i am not a fan of nepotism i like doing things transparently so when we do the giveaways i like to use random.org um which you can see up here in is up on the screen random.org is a true randomized um number picking system where what I do is I go to the giveaway thread, which this week is for the uh, Boker um, 734. And I go to the thread here and of course my post uh, where I give away or where I set down the rules is post number one. So we go to post number two, which is the very first eligible post in the thread. And then we go to the last post in the thread, which here is on page 20. And post number 400 is the very last one that is eligible. So then we go to random.org. And as you can see, I've populated uh, in the uh, numbers uh, here. Uh, post number two 
is the first eligible one and post number 400 is the last eligible one and when I hit generate like right now post it'll generate a number number 106 so we go back to the giveaway thread and post number 106 should be on page five I believe nope page six and post number 106 here by is by bovis 786 so let's uh, write this down sticker 106 by bovis 786 <coughs> bovis 786 wins the bladeforms.com sticker and that's how easy it is so yeah um that's how it is you know i bovis 786 is a uh um bovis 786 is a gold member registered in uh 2015 has a grand total of 14 um posts on the forums so yeah you know just want a bladeforms.com sticker and that's how easy it is for him. Uh, next up we're going to do a patch for the uh, bladeforms.com velcro patch that you can see right here uh, the bladeforms.com velcro patch is available in five different colorways you have blue you have gold you have od green you have multicam and you have stealth gray so whoever wins that um, will be able to pick from those colorways. So let's go back to random.org and let's hit the generate button. Random.org is taking a while. Okay, so post number 231 is gonna win the uh, patch. So let's go to the giveaway thread here. Get up to the top. Post number 231 should probably be on page 12, I want to say. Yep, so let's scroll down to there. Okay, so 231. TJ, T J S T A M P A. As you can see here, TJ Stampa wins the uh, BVC or. Post 231 wins the PVC patch with, so congrats to TJS Tampa. And that's how easy it is, folks. Um, you know, I hit the button on, or I hit the button on random.org. Um, yeah, the post number that's generated, get. Uh, gets generated. We go over to the giveaway thread. The giveaway thread uh, post gets uh, rooted out. That person gets announced, and that's how easy it is. No, have no worrying about me uh, just picking favorites. There, you guys see it live on camera, and that's how it goes. So very simple. Takes a lot of the headache out of my uh, out of a lot of the work out of my headache. And then later on down the road, um, when it comes time for the live stream uh, prize pack, we go to the random name picker. I take your all's names from the chat. Uh, you guys post basically what your all's uh, username is. We plug it into there, and that person uh, gets it done. So now that we've given away the uh, patch and the uh, now that we've given away the patch. The next thing will be the t-shirt and then the uh, membership and then we will do the uh, grand prize and the uh, live stream prize pack and then uh, everything will be done but in the meantime let's cover some news topics um, first and foremost knife is out there fighting for your knife rights so do what you can if you can donate to them they need the money they always need the money and you are fighting for our hobby here so uh, biggest topic this week uh, also was covered on the forums as well um, where a kid working at chick-fil-a um, And I should have looked this up before um, before doing it, but uh, here, let's do a search for choking. Maybe that'll pull it up. Okay, so yeah, um, here's the deal. A kid working for Chick-fil-A here 
basically uh, saved a toddler's life, or not a toddler, a six-year-old's life. Um, he spotted that a, a six-year-old was choking to death, jumped out the Chick-fil-A window, pulled out his knife, and basically uh, saved the kid from choking to death. You know, basically just leapt right into action and uh, saved this kid's life. Um, and that was super awesome of him. And I think that people found... Um, is this the thread? This the, I don't think this is actually the uh, Chick-fil-A uh, thread. Um, oh, maybe it is. Uh, but basically, the uh, this kid working at Chick-fil-A you know, pulled out a, his knife and uh, saved uh, another kid's life. You know, it's it's gotten to the point in this country where carrying a knife is no law, is seen as being out of the norm. And, you know, kids are just, you know, it, it's surprising to people that somebody would be able to uh, uh, do this. And folks in the forums, um, I've gotten a couple uh, texts or I've gotten a couple uh, private conversations, private messages uh, asking about doing a GoFundMe for this kid to get a good knife. Um, I'm actually seriously considering uh, doing that. So, yeah, um, probably look for a uh, GoFundMe uh, being posted up later tonight and possibly um, an announcement on it uh, for, you know, getting this kid a quality uh, piece of uh, equipment. Um, who knows, you know, maybe uh, uh, somebody, maybe we can get them a custom or, you know, even if it's uh, even if it's just a quality piece of uh, cutlery from Benchmade or, or Kershaw or SOG or, or CRKT or whatever, you know, something better than the Mall Ninja level Karambit that he had in his uh, pocket. So, yeah, um, who knows? Let's see if we can uh, get this guy some publicity and uh, pay it forward for him. So, yeah. Um, also, up next uh, from Knife Rights, Knife Rights uh, Ohio Knife Law Reform passed the Senate. Uh, basically here, they uh, were looking to um, get an amendment to the uh, state budget uh, where, let's see, what was this cover? Uh, SB 140 in the budget amendment uh, language addressed the often abusive and discriminatory application of existing Ohio weapons laws against knife carriers, clarifying that unless the knife or edge tool is actually used as a weapon, it is legal to be carried. This is the same kind of shit that we see in New York where they just prosecute you for uh, uh, having a knife in your pocket. So they want this, uh, they want or they got this to uh, pass the Senate. Um, it also removes from state statute the prohibition in, against manufacturing and sale of switchblade knives and gravity knives. Uh, possession of these is already legal in Ohio, so who knows? Um, somebody in Ohio may start making switchblades there. We're not really sure. But it's always good to see this kind of stuff pass. Um, it passed with a bipartisan uh, vote of 32 to 1. Uh, Ten more senators joined um, Joe Euchre as, uh, as co-sponsors. So it's good to see rights, you know, Second Amendment rights uh, on the knife front being uh, moved forward. So, you know, knife rights, again, you know, doing the work f uh, that other uh, supposedly uh, pro-Second Amendment organizations will not do. So, again... Do what you can to support knife rights. If you are on Amazon, if you're shopping on Amazon like 90% of the freaking country is, do what you can to support knife rights. And one of the ways you can do it, check this out. You see this here, smile.amazon.com? If you go to smile.amazon.com, you can select a charity to donate to. And I have chosen knife I try to shop local for most of everything, but I can't always do that. So, you know, by going to smile.amazon.com and selecting knife rights, part of your purchase will go to kniferights.org. As you can see, I have uh, um, generated personally just $4 because I don't use Amazon very often. But last quarter, from what I uh, recall, $1,900 went to uh, knifrights.com from various people doing um doing smile.nra.org so go to smile.nra or smile.amazon.com if you are buying stuff off of amazon.com it doesn't take money out of your pocket it takes money out of amazon's pocket and it goes to supporting our industry so do it do what you can simple very simple 
Um, let's see what we've got here. Get this guy a Randall or Bussy. Yeah, I don't think a Randall or a Bussy would be practical for daily carry. He probably needs a quality, you know, daily carry knife that's easy to carry. Maybe a Benchmade bug out. Maybe a Kershaw um, uh, leak. Maybe a ZT0450. Maybe something. You know, I mean, who knows? This guy might appreciate a custom knife from. Uh, I mean, you know, he might appreciate a custom knife from Stout. He might appreciate a Kaiser um, in S35EN. Just something quality. Hell, a Rick Hinderer knife would be easy or would be nice for this dude. Uh, get him an honorary bladeforums.com membership. Hey, you know, if the kid signs up for bladeforums.com, I will give him a pirate membership for five years. You know, get him set up. Uh, Crystal, I have a bug out on me currently. Small knife that you have on you is better than no knife at all. So, yeah, something with a belt cutter. Yeah, I, even just a sharp, plain edge knife uh, would uh, would work. Pair of three, lightweight. You know, whatever. Whatever works. I will gladly send this kid a T-shirt. I would gladly send this kid all kinds of bladeforms.com merch if I could get his information. So, yeah. Um, so that's it for uh, Knife Rights News this week. NRA News. We have got some bullshit going on on the second amendment front um and first and foremost chris cox the uh um head of the nra ila PAC um and head of the nra ila uh, resigned uh, last week uh for apparently his part in the uh coup again or attempted coup against wayne lapierre no idea uh whether that was actually a coup or not you know basically there was some tumult and turmoil going on with uh the nra so yeah um lots of people leaving nra severed uh, their ties with ackerman mcqueen nra tv is gone so all the people like colion noir um dana loche Cam Edwards, various other personalities on NRA TV. We don't know if they're still going to be uh, uh, if they're going to be brought under the NRA fold, or if they were just um, NRA or you know employees of Ackerman McQueen. Uh, Colion Noir, uh, you know, I followed him before he was picked up by NRA. So definitely, if you uh, can subscribe to his YouTube channel, it's worth watching anyhow. All right, so um, let's get back to some of the news here. California. California is getting ready to do require universal background checks before you buy fucking ammo in California. So ammo sales um, are up 300% before uh, bullet background checks uh, take effect. Um, bullet background checks in California are taking effect July 1st. So, you know, anybody who thinks that criminals in California are getting their ammo um, from gun dealers... You know, if, if they think that criminals are going to be stopped by this, they're, they're nut jobs. Uh, the same criminals that get their guns from out of state, just like they get their heroin and uh, freaking cocaine and weed from out of state, are still going to be able to get ammo. It, the, the ammo background checks are not going to be, uh, are not going to stop shit. Uh, Virginia Beach City employee starts petition to allow firearms at work after the mass shooting. So yeah, one of the uh, a couple weeks ago there was a mass shooting at Virginia Beach, um, and one of the employees had uh, mentioned to her husband the night before the shooting that she was super worried about uh, this disgruntled employee that uh, uh, might shoot up the place. She, Her husband tried to tell her to carry a gun. She's like, no, I can't carry a gun to work. Uh, even though she had a CCW permit, you know, she was prohibited by uh, Virginia Beach employee uh, policy from carrying a gun. She chose not to carry a gun um, and was unarmed and got killed by Virginia Beach's policies. So Virginia Beach City employee starts a petition to allow firearms at work uh, following the mass shooting. Yeah, we'll see how well this goes. Probably not going to go well at all. Um, okay, NRA's uh, top lobbyist resigns amid turmoil and infighting. Yeah, RA covered this. Chris Cox is gone. Um, Ackerman McQueen uh, is g getting gone, so we can cover that. Um, let's see, what else do we have here? I know I've got something from... Oh, yeah, the uh, background check takes effect July 1st. We've already covered that. Um, oh, yeah, Ralph Northam embraces uh, gun debate at Boys State. So, yeah, Ralph Northam, uh, governor of, uh, of Virginia, um, you know, was called out at Boys State 
asking whether or not uh, any of his proposals would have would have prevented the shooting, and he was like, no, you know, they wouldn't have prevented the shooting. Doesn't mean they should do it anyhow. So yeah, that's uh, all fun and games. Um, other Second Amendment news uh, stuff going on. Alabama car dealership offered free shotgun, Bible, and American flag to customers. I am not a fan of uh, pushing religion on people. Um, you know, if the dealership said that they would offer a free Bible or a Quran or a Torah or Old Testament to people, whatever, I just think, you know, if you're selling shit, leave your religion out of it. You know, don't push your stuff on it. Um, I do like the fact that they offered a uh, free shotgun to uh, people and free American flag because fuck yeah, this is America. Of course, what's not said is that Ford um, saw this, uh, you know, promo happening and what they do Ford reached out and was like, yeah, please don't do this. So yeah, you know, this is why we can't have nice things. Um, next up, of course, Joe Biden, uh, you know, during the debate opened up his mouth, inserted his foot yet again, because that's what Joe Biden does. Um, Joe Biden's education plan aims to defeat the NRA and reprise failed gun control laws. Yeah. Uh, you know, Freaking double-barreled uh, Joe basically said during the debates that, uh, you know, his laws helped regulate the number of clips inside of a gun. For those of you who know how guns work, um, yeah, guns don't keep clips inside them. Guns keep magazines inside them. Um, you know, firearms either have an internal box magazine or have a, uh, you know, revolver chamber or a revolver, you know, magazine that uh, holds the ammo. Or they have a det detachable box magazine, kind of like, uh, you know, my Glock 19 here has a detachable box magazine. There is not a number of clips that goes into a gun. And you certainly don't regulate the number of clips that go into them. But that's Joe Biden for you. Joe Biden also said that the NRA isn't the enemy. The gun manufacturers are the enemy. Man, it's it's interesting to see it, that they're just coming right out and saying that gun manufacturers are, are the enemy. It, it used to be, you know, before that they wouldn't mind or that they would couch this language in nebulous terms. And now they're just straight up coming right out and saying that, Gun manufacturers are the enemy. The gun owning public is the enemy. And like I said, all the Democrats during the debate straight up raised their hand and said they were for gun confiscation. So yeah, they are just coming right out and saying it now. It's uh, it's a different uh, thing than how it was 20 plus years ago. You know, for the last two decades, the Democrats have been saying, no, no, no the Democratic Party isn't anti-gun. We just want common sense safety regulations. And now they are straight up saying, we want to ban and confiscate guns. So, you know, figure it out, folks. If you're going to vote for the left, you know, you're voting to give up your uh, um, constitutional rights. So, yeah, a lot of fun there. And what else is going on here in news topics? Uh, Anti-gun forces suffer second defeat, this time in Ventura. Uh, federal District Court Judge Kathy uh, Benson Vango dealt a severe blow to anti-gun forces by issuing an order in the CRPA and NRA-supported lawsuit titled this. Uh, basically, okay, so basically um, the Del Mar Fair Board uh, enacted a ban on gun shows, and they said that... Uh, Apparently, they uh, voted to continue to allow gun shows at the uh, at the uh, uh, Del Mar Convention Center, and a uh, federal judge stopped them from doing it. So that's good. Uh, no longer, I mean, California, California, you know, already has universal uh, background check requirements. California has waiting period. California has mandatory training. California has. Um, one gun a month laws. California has uh, all, every bit of gun control you want. So why a gun show would be considered bad is unknown. Everybody selling guns at a gun show has to follow the law. This isn't you can go out in the parking lot and do whatever the hell you want. Gun shows are not selling 
you know, unregistered machine guns and silencers and RPGs and grenade launchers there, especially not in California. So, you know, this demonization against gun shows that uh, Californians are getting into is just stupidity. California has every gun law you want. If it's failing, it's not because of, you know, firearms owners. It's because gun control is fucking stupid. Um, so, yeah, there's a new study um, that confirms what we already know. Criminals don't follow the laws. What a shock. Uh, State of Illinois holds a B-plus rating from Giffords Law Center to prevent gun violence. Um, you know, they think that it's uh, it should be a safe spot. Yet, Illinois' large city of Chicago has long been an embarrassment to this notion. Um, basically, you know, Cal- uh, Chicago and Illinois has uh, almost as much strict gun control as uh, anybody could wish for. And a new study led by Philip J. Cook, for those of you who are familiar with gun control studies, this guy churns this shit out. This dude is can be relied upon for anti-gun studies. So um, it says that, uh, you know, it looks at the, this study looks at the last link. Uh, the elapsed time from transaction that actually provided the offender with the gun in question. Uh, he surveyed 221 people convicted of firearms-related offenses in Chicago that were in state prisons. Um, let's see, more than two-thirds of men obtained their primary guns within the last six months of the arrest. 19.3% uh, possessed their gun for five or fewer days. Almost a quarter of response had never owned a gun six months prior, blah, blah, blah. Um, but basically, it shows that, uh, you know, these people are breaking the law. What a shock. Criminals break the law when it comes to guns. The important thing here is time to crime. ATF has shown over and over and over again that when they do a seizure um, of firearms or traces of firearms, you know, a lot of these guns that are showing up in Chicago and Illinois have a time to crime average of a 10 to 11 years. You know, most of the guns that are recovered in Chicago last got background checked through the, uh, or last went through a gun dealer 10 to 11 years ago. So these guns are being stolen, they're being trafficked, whatever. You know, very few of them are showing up or are being bought at a gun store and then immediately uh, showing up in crimes. It's not happening. So, you know, what else is new? You know, criminals don't follow the law. What a shock. Also, in uh, stupid media tricks, 60 Minutes discovered that bullets cause damage. Yeah, they had, uh, last week, right after our broadcast, they had a, um, they had a, last week after our broadcast, they did a uh, a thing with AR-15 and what makes it the uh, weapon of choice for mass shooters. Uh, basically, they you know they claimed that this was going to be a political story. Uh, in reality, basically, it was just a hit piece on AR-15s. And you know what else is new from 60 Minutes? So basically, um, you know their goal was to make it look like the AR-15 ammo. Um, their goal was to make it look like AR-15 ammo is somehow special and not. Um, you know, not the uh, norm, um, but basically, you know, they. when it comes to anti-gun arguments, basically they engage in a lot of fallacies, uh, lying by omission, uh, cherry picking, skewed risk perception, uh, appeals to emotions such as what, you know, think of the children, children are dying, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, basically, they, what the uh, 60 Minutes did was they compared 9 mil to AR-15 ammo, uh, 9 millimeter ammo to uh, 5.56. And they made 5.56 out to be this huge danger. Um, what they did not mention is that 5.56 is basically the weakest of uh, rifle rounds in common use. You compare 5.56 to 7.62, you know, 7.62 ammo, um, you know, 5.56 average. Let's take a look here. You know, on my desk, I've got 5.56 ammo here. The 5.56 ammo that I've got in this magazine is 62 grains. That's the bullet weight. Very small uh, bullet, very small holes that it produces. 62 grains is a tiny bullet. Um, You know, you compare that to 7.62 ammo, where the bullet weight is 120 plus grains or more, or even 300 blackout ammo, where you've got bullet weights of 220 grains, you know, 62 grains versus 220 grains, huge weight disparity in bullets. Same thing with 30 out six, same thing with 30 30, 45 70, and other common rifle rounds. You know, rifle bullets 
hit hard because they go fast. And when you start talking about, oh my God, these bullets are going too fast. We have to do something to regulate the bullets going the quickness. You know, these bullets uh, can penetrate against police body armor. You know, every rifle round out there will go punch right through uh, level three uh, body armor with ease. You know, if you don't, you know, police body armor that's rated only for uh, nine milli or three fifty seven or forty four magnum or forty five is not going to be able to, uh, um, you know, shrug off rifle hits. Rifle hits go right through that. You have to have level three A or level four armor for um, for that to go through. And the only guys carrying level three A and level four armor are our dudes who are out on patrol in Iraq or SWAT team guys are facing rifle threats on the daily. So, you know, 60 Minutes is just uh, engaged in their usual bullshit where they don't mention that law-abiding citizens use their firearms for self-defense. Um, you know, it's it's a huge, huge stupid thing. As a matter of fact, I'm going to copy and paste uh, this article in the chat um, here where you should take a look at the uh, NRA's um, takedown of the... Um, of the 60 minute piece and just how stupid it is and let's get on to a couple other things and we're going to get back to giveaways uh, second to last thing here okay i guess we've got thunderstorm coming in it's because it's not a sunday here in louisville without a rainstorm uh senator chris murphy introduces smart gun legislation uh basically as usual you know they think you know this is a backdoor way to ban guns they think that smart uh, guns, yeah, they want to mandate that people use smart guns before the technology is out there. So, you know, when there's no smart guns, everybody and their brothers banned from using um, regular guns. You know, there's no smart guns on the market that were uh, function adequately for um, for self defense. You know, every you know, think about it, folks. How many of you guys have smartphones? How many of you guys have smartphones with with fingerprint sensors? Have you ever had a smartphone with a fingerprint sensor that just doesn't work? You know, when it's uh, let's uh, let's try this again. You know, this is my smartphone here. Oh my God, I'm pressing the thing. Oh, it doesn't. It's not reading my finger. It's not reading my fingerprint. Oh gosh, that's exactly what I want to happen in a self-defense situation is have my smartphone, smart gun not read my fingerprint when I'm sitting there fighting for my life and have to type in a, uh, you know, tell the, tell the person attacking me, oh, hey, guy, can you wait a second while I type in this uh, number so that, uh, you know, I can actually defend myself? It's not going to happen, folks. You know, how many times have you had your phone, you drop your phone and the screen shatters? You know, a firearm has explosions going off right next to where these sensors are. There's not a single firearm in existence right now that is smart enough and rugged enough to handle, you know, firearms um, disengagement. And even then, you know, the same people that are able to get super lab meth, heroin, cocaine, freaking counterfeit Prada purses and, and smuggle in sex slaves from Eastern Europe or South America or Asia are going to figure out ways to disable any kind of smart gun uh, locks that you can devise. So yeah, just sipping that tea. You know these people are fucking insane. They're all and anytime that somebody proposes smart gun legislation, all they want to do is ban guns. So the last thing I want to talk about today is a fellow named Andy No. Andy No is a uh, journalist. Um, a photojournalist and editor at a, a website called Quillette. And basically, this little guy is... Um, this little guy got the shit kicked out of him at a uh, Portland rally um, this weekend. And, you know, basically what Andy's uh, shtick is, is that he talks about extremism uh, for, or violent extremism coming from the left wing. He lives in Portland, Oregon. He goes around documenting Antifa and how they act. And uh, basically, he got the shit kicked out of him and got robbed this weekend uh, while at a demonstration in Portland, uh, where these people who are super upset about being portrayed as violent leftists, you know, attacked him in a mob with their faces masked up. They fucking splashed, uh, uh, you know, milkshakes allegedly filled with uh, quick-drying cement 
um, on him. They, you know, sprayed silly training on him. They kicked him in the nuts twice. They punched him in the face a whole bunch of times and sent him to the hospital with uh, black eyes, torn earlobe, and brain hemorrhaging. Yeah, the people that are so upset about being portrayed as violent leftists sent a guy to the hospital with brain hemorrhaging. And the same people online that constantly talk about how Donald Trump is, an, is a uh, threat to journalism lined up and defended this behavior. I've seen people using, you know, all kinds of bizarre uh, victim blaming arguments like, oh, well, he knew what he was getting into. He was provoking them. He was being provocative. He, uh, you know, he, his words inspire violence. So therefore we're justified in beating the shit out of him. This is the same kind of shit that justify that wife abusers use. Oh, my wife shouldn't have made me mad. So God, you know, I just can't help myself from punching her. Same language used by rape apologists. Oh, well, you know, she should, if she didn't want to get raped, she shouldn't have worn that revealing clothing or the uh, short skirt. Same language used by uh, fucking fascists. You know, oh, you know, words cause violence. Words, you know, he, he could influence people to commit hate crimes. So therefore, we're justified in defending ourselves by beating up this five foot four, 160 pound, small, Asian man who happens to be gay during Pride Month. You know, these people are just, uh, you know, I've never seen this level of, well, I can't say I've never seen, I've seen this repeatedly, you know, the hypocrisy from the left, you know, using, oh, the paradox of, of tolerance. We, we don't have to tolerate the intolerant to justify mob violence against people they disagree with. Folks, these people want you dead. If you disagree with their opinions, they will harm you. They have no problems doxing you. They have, you know, these people have no morals. Any tactic is justified to get their ends. And, you know, if you're not paying attention to this, you should be. So, yeah. You notice that uh, Antifa never really uh, shows up in places where there's folks that are going to be carrying concealed. And there's a reason for that. You know, it's because they get shot, and sooner or later it's going to happen. You know, these these masked up vigilantes are you know going to go up against the wrong people, and people are going to die, and it's going to continue to escalate. <sighs> Iron Kid, you should start your own religion the way of Kevin. You're dead on all the anti shits that are cunts, only good for jumping people. Um. Oh, Jason Puckett, yes. Did you hear about the Ravelry thing? Yes, actually, I did hear about the uh, Ravelry thing. Let's talk about Ravelry for a second. Ravelry is a yarn website. It's about knitting. And Ravelry decided that... Uh, that if you support Donald Trump, then they don't want anything to do with you. If you support Donald Trump, Ravelry decided that, uh, you know, they don't want you on their site. Uh, they are banning support of Donald Trump and his administration in all of its forms, including pro-Trump posts, designs, patterns, and profiles. We cannot provide a space that is inclusive of all and also allow support for open white supremacy, said the site's founders. Uh, support of the Trump administration is undeniably support for white supremacy. Yeah, you, you know, you wouldn't think that knitting would be a political uh, thing, but of course, you know, these people cannot separate themselves from politics in any way, shape, or form. You know, guys, I... Bladeforms.com, we have quarantined our politics largely into the political subform. Those of you may not know this, I am a lifelong registered Democrat. Surprise! I have been registered Democrat since I turned 18. I voted for Bill Clinton back in the 90s when it, the first vote I could do was for Bill Clinton. Since then, the Democratic Party has abandoned people like me. I believe in, you know, I believe in social welfare. I like to, you know, I want to see 
our nation take care of its citizens. I believe in protections against corporate uh, corporations. I believe in individual rights. I believe in looking out for uh, protecting minorities and stuff like that. Yeah, that's what I believe in. But the thing is, is that I am more of a classic liberal than a big government liberal. And the Democratic Party has left me behind because apparently if you support the Second Amendment, you are no longer welcome in the Democratic Party. If you believe in taking care of American citizens first before we help out illegal aliens, you are no longer welcome in the Democratic Party. If you believe that, uh, that you know, people should be able to, or we should protect uh, the downtrodden and everything like that, but there needs to be accountability in government. If you think that government programs just spending money for the sake of spending money are something that needs to be uh, reined in, you're no longer welcome in the Democratic Party. So it's not that I am a Republican or anything like that. It's that, um, you know, it's, it's that... Uh, it's not that I'm a dem or it's not that I'm a Republican or anything because I'm not. I'm more of one of the uh, of a centrist. You know, I will vote for whoever, but I cannot abide by people who put who don't put America first. I want to see American citizens' jobs protected. I want to see America. I want to see the interests of America looked out for before we look at, for out for the interests of anyone else in the world. You cannot, um, you know. If you're looking out for other people's benefit ahead of your own, you'll soon find yourself in the dust. And nobody is going to give a shit about American citizens other than us. So, if you don't uh, if you don't look out for number one, you know you're going to get screwed. And you know, I don't know what else to say there. You know, the Democratic I didn't leave the Democratic Party. The Democratic Party left me. And if that makes me a Trump loving, uh, you know, right winger, then so be it. You know, the because communism is fucking evil. Socialism is no good either. Socialism is just a uh, stalking horse for communism these days. And they're not even hiding it anymore. These people believe in the ab abolition of uh, private ownership of property. Um, they think that the state should provide everything they don't want uh, you to do. Yeah, they, they, they believe in diversity of everything except for diversity of thought. The same people that were screaming about uh, free speech you know, don't want to see it on college campuses or don't want to see free speech if it slightly inconveniences you. And, you know, these people have, you know, the same people talking about the party of science are also the ones promoting anti-vaxxism. You know, people talk about climate change um, and, you know, climate change deniers. The climate, you know, that's done, raising objections to all that stuff does not make you a denier it makes you a skeptic and science you know requires the one of the, one of the founding principles of science is repeatability of experiments if you cannot re, you know repeat an experiment and get the same results then the science is no fucking good and i am seeing anti-science people you know turning things into a religion into a religious dogma into you know the same people that scream out about or that are proudly proclaim they are atheists, that proudly proclaim that they believe in science, act like the worst religious religious zealots I've ever seen. So, yeah. Uh, what is going on here? So, it turns out that all of this was because a black member of the forum reported design from a rabid Trump supporter as racist. The said Trump supporter then docks a person who... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know about it. Yeah. Um... The, the people are just fucking nut jobs these days and they can't you know you've got people divorced or you know not talking to their parents not talking to their friends you know if you voted for this person i don't talk to you anymore there's a lot of stuff going on out there and i think a lot of it is because people have been conditioned to respond or to act like assholes online a lot of people these days have never grown up face or getting in a fight People have never taken a punch to the face, ever. And they think that because, you know, they have never experienced somebody punching them for what they say, they think that they have free reign to act like complete scumbags and sociopaths online. It's like the Stanford prison experiment, you know, writ large, where these people act like complete sociopaths and sadists because there's no freaking consequences uh, for their behavior. 
And as a result, you know, people have become more, more and more polarized. Um, Facebook and Twitter and everybody are deploying algorithms so that you are just bathed in an echo chamber. You never see viewpoints you disagree with. You know, people are conditioning themselves to remove viewpoints they disagree with because, you know, they no longer want to tolerate people with, uh, with opposing opinions. And I think it's bad for our country that this is happening. So, yeah. Um, it, it's just crazy. It's it's craziness, and I hate to I hate to see it. I I want to see you know people in this country getting along because demonizing people you disagree with and othering people that you disagree with winds up um, it winds up turning you know if you dehumanize people you disagree with it's a good way to inure yourself to how they feel and if if you've dehumanized them you've made them into an enemy and then when you start to hurt them then you start justifying all kinds of abhorrent and ghastly things um you know the stuff that's going on with uh you know the stuff that's going on um you know, people talk about concentration camps on the border and shit like that, and then have absolutely no problems uh, calling, you know, Trump supporters maggots, you know, inbred cousin fucking hillbilly, incest, racist, blah, blah, blah. You know, these people have absolutely no problems uh, sharing memes about punching Nazis and then calling anyone they disagree with a Nazi. And it, it's a bad scene for our society as a whole. So, yeah. Uh, that's where we're at. Uh, disagreement. Yeah, exactly. Disagreement is hate these days, not the beginnings of conversation. Jason Puckett. Yeah, that's exactly it. And apparently words are violence. So therefore, vi actual physical violence is justified responding to words. And that's what happened with uh, Andy No this weekend in Portland. You know, because Andy disagrees with these people and because he documents the violence of left-wing extremists, well, they think that they are justified in using violence against him. It's fucking crazy. And that's where we're at. So, yeah. Um, hey, folks. It is... Um, we are now at 6.08 p.m. I've still got to give away um, T-shirts, the membership, the grand prize membership, and the live stream prize pack. So let's get back to it. I've talked for a long time. So let's, uh, let's get away from that. Let's get to the... Let me see if I can uh, find the appropriate screen here. And we can get back to random.org. So, uh, let's do this. Uh, we are going to give away the t-shirt now. So, let's uh, hit the generate button. Post number 14. So, post number 14 on the giveaway thread is going to be on page 1. So, let's get to it. All right. Post number 14 is Red Sparrow. Red Sparrow. So congratulations to Red Sparrow. Post 14 wins the BFC shirt. All right. And let's do this. So, yeah, guys. Um, yeah, I really, really went overboard here on time. So, yeah, let's, let's knock these out. Post number 382 uh, for the membership. So let's go to the giveaway thread for that. Post number 382 should be on page, I believe, 20. Yep, so T. Scarlet wins the uh, membership extension. So congratulations to T. Scarlet with post 382. Okay, uh, Iron Kid, where is the merch on the Blade Forums? Um, good question, man. If you're looking for the bladeforums.com merchandise, what you do is you go down here to the help um, link at the bottom of every page, and then there's a link here for bladeforums.com merchandise, and that's where you can uh, purchase any of the merchandise that we uh, have uh, available. So, yeah, that's, that's where that is. So, yeah. You can see my smart ass remarks on there too. All right, so folks, y'all ready for the uh, y'all ready for the uh, grand prize giveaway? Um, 
what is going on here? Uh, big bad goth um, is asking for help. What's wrong with uh, what's wrong, big bad goth? What do you need help with? Not sure what's going on there, uh, but yeah, if you guys are you guys ready for the uh, grand prize giveaway for the uh, Blade Farm or for the uh, Boker 734 uh, Urban Trapper? Um, I know I am because I'd like to get out of here despite it being a heavy ass rainstorm. Yeah, it is uh, <laughs> stupid shit. Who knows? All right, so yeah, uh, let's do this. Let's do the grand prize here. Go to random.org, hit generate 227. 227 on the giveaway thread. So that's probably going to be on page. Is that going to be on page 11? Nope, page 12. All right, so page 12 has uh, post number 227 as the giveaway. So post 227 by Sharps wins the Boker. 734 um, Urban Trapper. Congrats to you, man. It's post number 227 by Sharps. All right, guys. So, yeah, here's the deal. Um, you have, we are at the end of the broadcast. It is 6 12. It is time to do the uh, live stream prize pack giveaway. This week, we are going to be giving away a bunch of shit as usual. Let me dump all this stuff out of here. And we will show you everything that uh, somebody is getting. All right, so this week on the live stream giveaway, somebody will win a Velocity Systems sticker, a Protex sticker, a Magpul sticker. Um, oh man, we've got a bunch of stuff. A hank of green lime green 550 cord that may or may not have fallen in my dog's water bowl. We have a Shrade knife. Locking liner, black blade. Uh, this is the Schrade model SQ312 uh, from when they were still made in the U.S. before they got bought by Taylor Cutlery. So somebody's going to win that. And then we have everybody's favorite, the Frost Cutlery Flying Falcon Little Whirlwind made of the best Chinesium. This sucker is going to be somebody's giveaway for the hobo knife. Uh, not covered in hobo juice, but it should be. And then we have a collection of desk crap that people will be getting. Uh, somebody's going to get a broken price tag holder. Somebody's going to get soy sauce, uh, some poison water, a whole bunch of laser cut scrap, and even a test barcode from the system. So let's see here. Let's set this off. Get your bladeforums.com username in chat before the music ends and if you want to take part in the live stream giveaway so start the music you guys have until you guys have until the music stops to get your username and chat All right, guys, you have got a grand total of 2 minutes, 20 seconds to get your usernames in chat before uh, before we uh, do the giveaway thing here. So let's get that going. 
M Rider 101, I believe that's Molokai Rider. Uh, Iron Kid, no, Iron Kid, you already won once, didn't you? So yeah, you you need to wait a couple weeks. Uh, next week, uh, skip away. We'll do the uh, do that. Mark Grant, you just you've got a live stream prize. Yeah, Mark. Uh, uh no, dude, you got a live stream prize pack win already. I'm disqualifying you from this week, uh, Mark. You'll get a chance to do yours uh, in a week or two, or in a couple weeks. All right. Big bad goth, evil Ed. All right. So you guys have one minute, 30 seconds to get your usernames in. Get your usernames in, folks. You got one minute, 30 seconds left. All right. All right. Spider, uh, Spark, do you still have the lucky one knife that's the one I want? Not the Spider Co. I am not sure what the lucky one knife is, man. Um... Mark, you've got, uh, you know, you've got the, yeah, Mark, you've got the week 24 uh, prize pack, so I've, you know, I've got that somewhere, so you're uh, going to be getting that. Um, yeah, good odds for people today, not many uh, people entering, um, so yeah, make sure that uh, you get your username in if you uh, uh, haven't done it, because you've got a grand total of... 30 seconds left to oh cold steel lucky one slip joint is that the i don't know that's that's somewhere i gotta i gotta figure it out was that week uh to... spark you still have the lucky one i that's the one i want not the spider code. oh okay so yeah a couple uh weeks back we did all right so yeah i'm gonna write this down cold Steel Lucky One for Marcus Bear. So yeah, I'll make sure that you get the uh, Lucky One instead of the Spider Co. So yeah, you'll be good to go. Um, music is done. Music is done, folks. So yeah, we don't have a lot of people um, on that are eligible for this week. So it's great odds for somebody uh, to win. So let's go to the uh, let's get to the uh, random th thing. All right, so. Uh, as usual, just like we use random.org for the um, just like we use random.org for uh, picking the random winner, this is random name picker. Where, as you can see, I've copied and pasted the list of everybody who entered their username into the chat. Um, so yeah, um, we've got Ed Seymour, Big Bad Goth, Owen King, Joe N, Coyote Trails, Kevin Nelson. Uh, Gary W. Grayley, SW Minus, uh, EDC, Iron Kid 883, and Molokart, or M Rider 101. So let's see here. How many people is that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So you have, uh, eight, for everybody that entered, you've got a 1 in 10 chance of winning. So when I hit the rerun button, uh, whoever wins will get uh, uh, shown up here at the top. So let's do it. Big Bad Goth, congrats. Big Bad Goth gets the live stream prize pack. Big Bad Goth. Congrats, one half of the terrible Irish duo. Big Bad Goth wins the live stream prize pack. One half of the, uh, of the terrible Irish uh, duo gets the box full of junk and uh, high speed. Oh, no. High-speed other stuff. This is going to be a fun customs declaration for you guys. You know, empty bottle of plastic. 550 cord piece. You know, barcode label. And, of course, ch knife made of pure Chinesium. Are you guys going to be able to... Uh, are you guys going to be able to have this locking knife or these locking knives in Ireland? Or do they ban everything? Is it going to make it through customs or no? Um let me know man you know it's i'm not sure um if this stuff isn't going to make it through uh customs then uh you know you guys are going to be sol um but we'll figure it out we'll get it uh taken care of so yeah that's how it is so here we are um that is it for the uh um week 26 uh live stream uh giveaway um 
and watch the number of viewers uh, drastically crash. So yeah, everybody's tuning out now that the live stream stuff is uh, going out. Uh, thanks, Kevin Nelson. Fourth uh, of July. Uh, it's going to be an interesting thing. I still got to go and get my. Uh, I still. Well, shit. All right, hang on. Let me fix this. Uh, screwed up my. Uh, screwed up my broadcast windows here. So yeah. Um, Let's, uh, let's get that working again. Okay, there we go. So, yeah, um, 4th of July is coming up this week, and for those of you who are in the U.K., like Big Bad Goth and uh, uh, Iron Kid, uh, it is our independence. Uh, for those of you guys who aren't aware, um, 4th of July is also my uh, birth uh, or it's the day before my birthday so I typically celebrate my birthday uh, July 4th even though my birthday is July 5th so I am planning on fireworks I am planning on cookouts I am planning on all kinds of good stuff um, for my birthday uh, this week I'll probably have to come into work on Friday but July 4th I get a day off so that's awesome so folks those of you in America um, hope you have a good 4th of July um, weekend this week because 4th of July is Thursday so probably a bunch of you are going to get four day weekends uh, for the, those of you outside of America you're welcome for uh, um, us continuing to uh, rule the world for y'all and producing all the best uh, movies and having a culture that is absolutely terrible that you guys want to emulate and all the rest um republic of ireland is not part of the uk my middle child is third of july enjoy your celebrations lad yeah nobody cares that you're not part of the uk you're still part of uh you know you're part of the british isles or whatever you're subjects of the crown um, you know, drink your drink your green beer, Mr. Leprechaun. You know, nobody nobody wants to hear your excuses. You know, get yeah, you know, do a river dance or something. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I hope you guys. Uh, you know, I love I love you and uh, um, I love you and Big Bad Goth, and uh, I'm really appreciative of you guys uh, watching every week. And uh, you know, you guys have a great. Uh, Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for listening to me ramble as usual. And I hope you guys have a, a great weekend. Um, in the meantime, if you guys haven't entered into the uh, giveaway thread um, for the week 27, the Kaiser, uh, make sure that you get in on this because the Kaiser's Duke, the Kaiser Duke knife is pretty dope. You don't want to pass this by if you uh, you don't want to pass this by if you have a chance. This is actually a really cool knife, uh, VG10 steel, etc. Um, and you know, as usual, like like the uh, giveaway live stream, comment down below, subscribe to Bladeforms.com's channel, hit the notification button, and get all the stuff you want. Thank you all once again for watching, and I hope you have a great weekend and great week, and uh, happy 4th of July to American people, and keep your powder dry. Uh, stay armed, and, uh, you know, only sharp knives are interesting. Have a good one.